Hello and welcome to another EG Recap. I'm Jack Lindsay, and this is my face. Now if you find yourself fighting back the urge to vomit, just click on over to another tab and leave me as audio on in the background. But I'm gonna try things in a kind of quasi-Jeremy setup, because that's actually gonna save me a lot of time on editing and help me reach the volume of output I need to for these recaps. So if you've got suggestions for how to improve things for this style of presentation, drop them in the comments. Also, I'm back after a long absence. I had to take care of some stuff out of state. Did you miss me? Well, your daily dose of news has returned, and I've got one story for you today, but it's awesome. A few days ago, our very own Mr. Jonathan Irwin managed to land an interview with Mark Kern. Now, if that name sounds familiar, it's because he was a team lead in World of Warcraft back in the glory days, and he worked on several other Blizzard titles, StarCraft II, StarCraft, Diablo II, a bunch of them. And Jonathan managed to get this interview, and it's actually really cool. It's about the whole Hearthstone scandal, which I'm sure you all have heard about by now. But Mark Kern gives a lot of industry insider information, and I'm going to go over it here with you. So feel free to read along with me or listen along while you do other things. Hopefully I'm not fuzzy. Hopefully that is invisible behind me. So it looks like I'm just a tiny man floating in the website itself. But let's check this one out. Where there's smoke, there's fire, and Blizzard Entertainment has been dealing with its fair share of both this week in the wake of the banning of professional Hearthstone player Blitzchung following his vocal support for Hong Kong protesters. The banning is instated for a full year, it was at that time, and also included knocking his winnings for the season down to zero not only removing his form of income, but also undoing his efforts. Blizzard claimed that Blitzchung had broken the rules, but the way the rule was written has repeatedly been called into dispute within both the gaming community and the industry itself. The situation sparked a firestorm, and within hours, calls to boycott Blizzard were trending online, memes flowed freely, R Blizzard opened and closed several times, and quiet dissent at Blizzard elevated to the form of walkouts. This situation is ongoing, but here are some notable events for the past few days. You got Blizzard employees gathering by an orc statue at Blizzard HQ in Irvine, California as part of a walkout. Hearthstone pro Brian Kibler calls it quits. He issued a statement on October 9th announcing he'd have no involvement with the Grandmasters tournament unless changes were made. While he supported Blitz Chung's right to free speech, he didn't fault Blizzard for punishment. However, the severity of the punishment is what led to his decision. And Jonathan's got the statement here in the article, which will be linked below, and you can check that out yourself if you'd like to. But we're going to move on. While much of the gaming community and industry is willing to call out Blizzard over what is felt to be an undeserved punishment of the Hearthstone player, there are others who read it in a different way. Co-founder of Rock Paper Shotgun John Walker has a drastically different view on the situation. And we've got a tweet from him saying, It's extraordinary watching them all suddenly having discovered China is is a bit effed up, and then acting as though it's been their lifelong work to fight against the regime. It's frightening that it took a Twitch streamer getting a ban for them to even pretend they gave a bleep. I genuinely still do not know what the rules are about swearing on YouTube, so I'm just gonna pull Ben Shapiro and just bleep it. In a series of tweets on his personal account, he called the sincerity of gamers into question, trying to link the incident at BlizzCon last year over Diablo Immortal to the outrage over Blitz Chung's ban. It's important to note that John Walker is against Blitzchung's ban, but in a seemingly years-long feud with the gaming community with no end in sight, rather than trying to find common ground, he tried to take it as a moment to call gamers out. This riled up his own storm of backlash, which at the time of this writing seems to have calmed down. John Walker treated those who sincerely criticized his statement the same as he treated trolls. He muted them. I just mute them all... <laughs> I just mute them all away and go back to enjoying funny tweets from nice people again. Ugh... <sighs> While some of the replies were definitely taking things too far by insulting his appearance, most criticisms were civil. Speaking of which, you guys can say whatever you like about my appearance, I can take it. <laughs> it's a prime example of how this situation has boiled up outside the immediacy of Blitzchung's punishment. It was a spark that ignited a powder keg on growing concerns of China's influence on the global gaming community at large. Oh, what have we here? That's a hyperlink. And it goes to an article by one Mr. Jack Lindsay. Blood poker and corpses no longer allowed in Chinese video games. If you guys want to go on over to the site and check that one out, I hear it's a good. So we got a tweet here by Mark Kern canceling his World of Warcraft subscription. I made this game with the team. I'm opposed to Blizzard's fear of China and silencing of Blitzchung. I'm calling on Blizzard to stand up for what is right. He says many players are in the process of canceling. 
Many players are in the process of canceling World of Warcraft subscriptions and avoiding playing Blizzard products altogether, as this situation continues to escalate as a means to let their voices be known where any company is most likely to listen, their financial bottom lines. One of the many voices, and perhaps the most notable, is none other than Mark Kern himself. He was with Blizzard Entertainment through what many regard as the glory days of the company, and he was the team lead in vanilla World of Warcraft. And here he is right here. Keeping that in mind, Exclusively Games reached out to Mark Kern. By Exclusively Games, he means Jonathan Irwin reached out to Mark Kern for an interview on the subject, to which he agreed. He was like, THE Jonathan Irwin? Yes, I'll give you an interview. <laughs> He was informed pre-interview that Exclusively Games staff are remaining apolitical on this matter, focused on only covering the events and differing perspectives as they unfold. The interview is as follows, and answers are presented in their entirety. Now I wanted to give you guys the backstory that Jonathan included to catch everyone up to speed in case anyone hadn't heard. But now we're to the meat of it, we're to the interview itself. I, I think this is really cool. Jonathan says, Hello Mark, it's THE Jonathan Irwin from Exclusively Games. I appreciate you taking a moment to comment on this whole situation with Blitzchung. I saw you're a prominent figure among the movement of people canceling subscriptions, deleting their accounts, and abstaining from association with any Blizzard products for the, f for the foreseeable future. Given your time with the company during its earlier years, do you have any insight into how Blizzard has gone from a pro-gamer company to one dealing out such harsh punishment? Mark says, big question. Jonathan says, sorry if it's a loaded one. Don't you ever apologize, Jonathan. I guess what it'd be more apt to ask is, do you think it's a product of the old guard losing their way, or all the new faces among executives in the last new years? Huh. Kind of like a certain faction. The change in leadership. It led it astray. First of all, oh uh, wait, no, I, I feel the need to clarify that I'm talking about the Horde because I know some people will hear that and go, you're being political. No, it's, I'm talking about Sylvanas and the Horde. Mark says, first of all, I don't know current Blizzard, so there's no way for me to speculate on how it works internally now. I only know how Blizzard used to be in the years when we made Starcraft, Diablo, and World of Warcraft. I can tell you that nearly all the original management is gone, as well as most of the original teams that made these games we love. I can tell you that Blizzard was guided by principles of gamers first, providing the best value we could to gamers, taking the time to do things right, and internally we would say, don't get greedy. <laughs> Meaning we would never hold profit over doing what was right for our games and customers. We like to think of ourselves as finding a balance between game design and business sense. It seems like so many companies start out that way. Look at that Dark Knight quote, die a hero who lives long enough to see yourself become the villain. We made Battle.net free, for example, at a time when all other companies were charging for online play. That's right. We devoted a lot of time to editors so that players could make content in our games. That's, yeah, that. And we patched our games for free and added content for free well after the lifespan of these games had faded on our sales catalogs. I, remember, I was there. Jonathan says, there's a very clear contrast from the Blizzard of today and the Blizzard of yesterday, to be sure. It seems among executives, at least, those tenants have been forgotten. But among much of the new staff, it looks like many are trying to take a stand. There have been a number of walkouts in the last 24 hours, and rumor has it there's an internal investigation into the initial dissent where the Think Globally and Every Voice Matters stones were covered. Is there anything you'd like to say to current Blizzard staff letting their voices be heard against the corporate decision to punish Blitzchung? And Mark says, first, you are all very brave. There used to be a time at Blizzard when we said we would never fire someone for voicing their opinion. My office was always open and I sat amongst the team. There would be days when there were lines to see me to talk about why this or that wasn't the right thing we should be doing for the game or even external issues. I felt it was my job to listen. We would debate passionately, but everyone felt safe to say what was on their minds. We may not agree, we may decide otherwise, but you were heard as much as we could. If what you say is true about these rumors of internal investigations, this would be 100% against the blizzard I knew and loved. Management was very accessible back then. Slowly, I do know that management moved to another floor after I left, and access was guarded to executive key cards and the like. <laughs> uh, that's like this meta, uh, that's like this meta story where blizzard executives are becoming video game bosses within their own building, on different floors that you have to unlock with guarded key cards. Perhaps that was the start of the change. Perhaps that's the only way it can work in a large corporation. But it certainly weakens your perspective as you begin to be isolated from devs and day to day. I once had a chance to meet with Elon Musk at SpaceX. He spent hours with me, showing me around and talking about his passion for Mars. Guess what? He sits right out there with his teams. And those are giant companies he runs. Maybe it's possible and maybe Blizzard should return to that. By the way, anyone interested in how team dynamics and management worked at Blizzard back then should check out John Stats' The WoW Diary, which is a nearly day-by-day -day account of the development of World of Warcraft. And Jonathan's got that linked. 
in the article. Okay, it's a book that you can order on Amazon, but if you want to, just go to the article and open it up. Jonathan says, maybe they should. Transparency is always a good thing, both within a company and with the general public. One last question, and again, I want to thank you for your time today. I know you're a busy man. Given that the situation has spawned entirely due to the punishment of Blitzchung, in your opinion, do you think Blizzard revising their ruling would help them at all? Or is this a matter where the damage has been done and they have far more to consider in terms of a fix than just a reversal of the matter? I think the problem Blizzard faces is twofold. One is internal, the other is bigger than just Blizzard. Internally, Blizzard used to be able to carve out a high degree of independence from parent companies because they were the market leader and had the most sales. We could say no to anything and were left alone to do what we thought was best. That changed the day revenue at Blizzard was outshined by other games in genres, like Fortnite vs Overwatch, and against mobile divisions within Activision Blizzard. Once you're no longer the goose that lays the golden egg, your ability to retain that independence is over. Notice how after Mike Morhaime left, the Blizzard CEO position was never filled. Instead, we got a president, which, if you know corporate hierarchies, is not the same as a CEO inside the company. I believe this is a sign that Activision is able to assert more dominance over Blizzard day to day. Also, note the CFO is from Activision side of things right now. That's another clue that I would say points to the decreasing autonomy inside Blizzard. Externally, we have a bigger problem, one that faces all American companies. China has become not just one of the biggest markets for games and films, but one of the largest, most pervasive investors in American media companies. This is a deliberate policy move by the Chinese government. I know this because I've worked with Chinese companies for well over a decade. If they promise to uphold the Communist Party, including having in-company seminars on doctrine, they get all sorts of benefits, including free land, free office space, and direct funding to the tune of billions across the industry. This money is directly used in and outside of China to expand influence. This is a well-known policy doctrine of China to dominate new emerging media and technology. Now you have your game company, and you're not only dependent on Chinese money, but also access to Chinese markets, which form a huge part of your revenue. Over 11% of Activision was quoted, but for Blizzard itself, the number was much higher. And this actually isn't just for games. I don't know if you guys remember the Warcraft movie that came out fairly recently. It bombed in the States. I mean, I think it was, I didn't watch it. It looked aggressively mediocre, let's say. But it actually did incredibly well in China. And China only lets a certain number of American movies into their theaters per year. So Blizzard stands to make a lot of money, or let, let's say Blizzard stands to lose a lot of money by angering China. China's now able to dictate terms, as it were on who gets to play your games, what they can say, and what content you can include in your games. Not just China, but worldwide. One Taiwanese company told me recently that they have to censor the word Taiwan and ban players who say it in chat. <laughs> in Taiwan, which for your readers is not actually part of China, even though China claims it is. This affects American tech companies, sports, media, film, news, and yes, games. Jonathan says, for clarity's sake, isn't an SAR like Hong Kong? And Mark says, no. Taiwan is fully independent, but you can't say that. My passport even says born in China now because the US for China relations would not recognize Taiwan as a separate nation. Even Taiwan is folding. Once fiercely independent, once tensions eased, China investments began to pour in. Now in Taiwan, nobody wants to give up Chinese money. So the bigger problem is, how can we remain our own sovereign nation with our own values if China gets to dictate what we can say and do in our own products? products that still dominate the world. It's effectively a great control mechanism for China to exert its political will globally. Look at what is happening with the NBA and Apple in just the past week. So in the end, what can Blizzard do? They're a public company. They can't do anything that would damage shareholder value. And yet, I still call upon them to do the right thing. They don't have to go out there and be political and free to better Hong Kong, but they can stop punishing players just to appease China. Jonathan says, thank you very much for your thoughts on this whole situation. I'm sure our readers at Exclusively Games will enjoy this. Your time and evening has been very appreciated. And Mark says, you're welcome. I hope it helps. I hope gamers get a better view of what's happening and why it's important to support game companies who do take a stand, because that's very hard to do today in today's globally linked economy. That's true. There's that old saying that ideals are very expensive. It's going to cost you to stand up for your ideals. Now, I found this interview incredibly insightful into the inner workings of the industry, uh, and Blizzard and global markets and just really these forces that are shaping and driving the way that games are being made. I think it's an incredibly relevant piece of news on the gaming industry. Probably the most impactful article to come through exclusively the game. And that's not to say there are, there are plenty of good articles. There are plenty of writers on EG. You guys are great. I love you. But for all those of you out there who are rooting for this little website to succeed, this was really cool. 
that Mark Kern came and gave an interview like this. And I'm just going to go ahead and head off the inevitable criticism that I can hear coming about this being political. I was not political in covering this story. Jonathan was not political in covering the story. Neither of us injected our politics into it. It is a story specifically about global politics directly impacting the game world. We're just covering that news. I, I don't know why I... I know most of you know... I know most of you can tell the difference, but I guarantee you there are going to be some comments. This isn't what I paid for. You're just like Kotaku now. Ugh, anyway. I'm back in action. Got a new style going on. Tell me if you like it. How you think it could be done better. Tell me if you hate it. You hate my face. It's not going anywhere though. Tomorrow we'll get multiple stories in a recap, just like the old days. And don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Because it'll grow the channel, it'll grow the site, and we'll get more interviews with industry veterans. And then we'll take over the world. Until next time.